Hello guys and welcome to this Flutter State Management course. But before you proceed, please do make sure you hit that like button and also the subscribe button so that YouTube can show these videos to people that are willing to learn Flutter State Management. So in this video, I'm going to break it down for you to understand how you can actually use Flutter State Management just like the way you do it with React Native applications or React applications. And over here, you could see we have the pop spec camo file. Here I have the Flutter Redux, the Redux Tongue, as well as the Redux. So these are the three dependencies that we are going to be using. I kind of added HTTP in case we are going to be needing to make a request, but I don't think we, we are going to be doing that. I'm going to close that immediately and let's get started. So inside this LIB folder or the lib folder, you could see we have a store folder. I created two files called actions and also the reducer file. And I'm going to come over to the main.dat file. So above here, I'm going to add something called types. So let's just say type of actions. If you're coming from React Native or React, you will have some kind of understanding. And I'm going to call this an enum. I'm going to give it a types. And here we have the click, the increment, and also the add quotes. So these are the type of actions we are going to be using, the click, the increment, and as well as the add post. So first thing first is to come over to our reducer. We are going to be creating our, all our reducers, and then we are going to be coming over to actions. So quickly, let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing you want to do is to import the Redux. And the second thing, so make sure you spell things correctly. The second thing you want to import is uh, you're going to import the package. Or uh, let's just let's just specify this this way. I want to have access to this type of actions. So that's why I'm importing that. And uh, we can now create our app state. So you already know that state handles our initial values or stores our initial values. So initial values we're going to be using is called, uh, sorry, I'm going to be count. We're going to have a final as well, a final value integer of click counts and also a final of string quotes. So final values means that these values are just single. You are not reassigning them or you are not going to be editing them. Although that in Flutter, we are still going to make a way that we're going to be editing this using either the get or we can just create a function which we are going to be doing immediately. So I want these values to have uh, the values assigned to it. So we are going to be using the constructor to do that. And also these dot quotes. And we're going to create a function or a method called copy with, which is going to be updating these values for us. So we have the click counts. And lastly, we have the quotes, which is going to return from the app state. We want to have access to those values. So count remains the new count or it returns the old count. So if you're coming from PHP, you will understand this ternary operator. Then we have the click count, which is actually the click count or this dot click count. And lastly, we have the quotes, which is the quotes or this dot quotes. So let's go ahead and save that and uh, in Flutter, we still have something called uh, combined reducers. So reducers are very important. I'm going to create the first reducer before we go over to that combined reducers. So let's just give these uh, uh, reducers comment here. So each reducer is going to be doing one specific thing, although that we can actually use multiple action in a single reducer. So I'm going to create the first one called the counter reducer. 
which is going to uh, accept the state and also an action. So for Flutter, we call it dynamic action. So this is just on a basic peripheral knowledge. Then we have uh, to switch the action. So first one we're gonna have is, remember that we have a case of type dot increment. So this type, I think I should uh, look into that. I think we have uh, the, let me kind of get rid of this one. And make sure it's not connected to how we want it. But from the main dot that we do have, okay, types, not actually type. So we have types dot increment. So types dot increment is going to return state dot copy with, just like we do on React or React native apps, we can now pass the state dot counts. Uh, plus one or we can actually pass a new value if we do uh, if we did pass a new value using the I think yeah using the action so we can just say action dot count but we are not going to be doing that for this we are gonna be doing that for the quotes and here that solves it then we can create one more action called uh, one more user called update quotes user so we basically have the same thing so for this update quote reducer we are going to be updating this quote using a method or a function called update quote action so I'm going to say if the action is update quote action, then it should perform this operation. So we have return state dot copy with. So I guess you know the one we want to update. So we have a action dot quote. Like I said, we are, we we didn't want to do it for the counter user we just wanted to do it for this one so you could see here we are using the action of quotes and over here we are getting an error because we've not yet created that uh, class we are going to be doing that shortly so i'm just going to comment this out i just wanted to show you how we can actually use uh, combined reducers then uh, lastly please don't forget to return the state because we have a a return state of update uh, quotes Sorry, a return state of app state. So here, you don't forget to return the state. And lastly, let's go ahead and uh, bring down our reducers. So like I say, we do have combined reducers. So combined reducers accepts an array of reducers. So we have the counter reducer. So you can just go ahead and clear all these things. They are not actually necessary. And we can just specify an app state so that in order to keep our values safe and that solves it. And right now let's go ahead and uh, make use of this reducer. And making use of that requires that we connect our Redux to our application. So right now it's not yet connected and we are going to do that quickly. So above this uh, run or the main function, I'm going to connect store. So we have a final of store, which is a new store. So our store has the app state type and for the store, remember that we did that we do have uh, the reducers, which is the combined reducers that we created. 
Then we have our initial state. So sorry for that, guys. So we have initial state. So initial state is going to take the up state and we have a count of zero. So these are just the default values that we want to pass. So if we say this is one, it's going to pass that. Then we have the click count of, of zero. And lastly, uh, we have for the quotes. So let's just call it default quotes. And one more thing, we don't forget to pass the middleware. So we have the middleware, which is going to take the tongue middleware. So all these things here, like I said, they are not necessary. So I think uh, we, we can just go ahead and import this. Uh, yeah, so everything should be solved by now. And everything is working fine. So we already have the default values assigned, uh, assigned to our app states. All right, now let's have access to that inside our application. And I'm going to uh, create a final of store over here. So this store is going to be uh, a type of store with an app state. So we have the app state and here uh, we can just use the constructor to make sure that we will have that value in order to avoid the error. So we can use this the store. So lastly, we can just come over here and pass that store to the store. So kind of looking very cool. Just, just that is a bit different from the way we do it with uh, React or React apps. So we already have our store connected and we want to have access to those values. So we use something called store connector on Flutter. So I want to have access to uh, the first uh, value. I'm going to use, let me just get rid of this text. I'm going to use something called store connector. So store connector accepts, uh, let's just give this a type of app state. So stop, store connector take the app state and also uh, receives the type of values that we want to assess. So I want to assess a type of integer from the store connector. I'm going to uh, get rid of this. So let's just gradu gradually do this so that we don't run ourselves into confusion. So the first one there is going to be a converter, which is going to take from the store. And we want to have access to a store dot state dot count. So why we having a, a, a converter first is to make sure that we assess an integer. So our account is an integer. Then we have the builder, which is going to render application. So for the second one is going to have access to a variable and here we can now return a new text which is going to accept the counts and that should be it and uh, i don't think we should be getting that error so it's kind of very bad so we have a return of new text, kind of close this here in order to solve that. So we don't actually have an error and let me just go ahead and save. So we kind of save and say app state store connector. So this is that come in and that's because I forgot that we should wrap this with a store provider. And let's just go ahead and quickly cut this and have it on our clipboard and work on that. So instead of us to return a scaffold directly, we have to first of all return a new store provider. So the store provider is going to be a type of app state. 
So I kind of forgot that quickly. And for the child, the child is going to contain every other thing that uh, we need. Then for the store, it's going to be the store value, uh, value that we are passing from our constructor. So I think we didn't pass that down here. Uh, okay. So guys, <laughs> I still forgot that I didn't pass that here. So I think I can we can get rid of this one totally. So we don't actually need this my app. Can get rid of that and make it change this one to my app. So we are still in line. Just little fix. And uh, here we have store. And you can just change this to store as well. And uh, we have uh, this is not a string, so this is a store type with an app state. So that, that kind of make things look safer. And here we have a let's say flutter state management. And let's save that, and hopefully we shouldn't get an error. I think we should because we don't have a material app in our child and let's just quickly do that. So what to do is totally get rid of this scaffold, get rid of the return there, not the scaffold. And I'm going to return a, a new store provider. So for the store provider, which is going to have access to the store and for the child, we are now going to use the material app. So inside the material app, which is going to accept the theme of, let's just use theme data dot dark. Uh, this is theme data, not just theme. So my machine is kind of laggy. So guys, sorry for all these turnarounds. I, I think it will be more safe that we do things uh, Let's just call it title. So for the title here, let me just give it a, a simple title. And lastly, we are going to have the home. So for the home, we can now bring in the scaffold. So tracing that here looks safe. Now we can close this and get rid of this and that should solve it so let's kind of save and see so right here we have that dark i can make this white or let's just leave it that way still good so guys sorry for that and i still have this on the clipboard and let's just go ahead and paste that So guys, we didn't have an error. Just go ahead and click on this uh, reload or hot reload. I think hot restart, which is going to restart the application. And then you're gonna see the default value that we passed from our account. So I knew that that shouldn't probably give us an error because we kind of uh, made things uh, look uh, proper. So just go ahead and do that and everything should work very well and very fine. So. I just have to set this to zero. So saving that and uh, we can just click on this to hot restart and this value should definitely give us zero if everything works perfectly. So I don't know, okay, we do, we do have the zero right now. So right now you could see we using the stock connector, we had access to our store and we are able to return an integer. We can actually return the state here. So instead of us to use integer, we just have to pass the app state here, which is going to return the app state for us. Then we can have access to state.store. Any other thing. But right here you could see we have our store values assessed. So the next thing now is to make sure that we, are, we can be able to increment, increment this store. So now my English is kind of funny. So uh, beneath this, I'm going to put a comma. And I'm going to, uh, let's say, okay, guys, let's just do it this way. 
I think uh, beneath the home, we're gonna come here and break this down. So we, we have to add the floating, I think. Uh, so that should be here. So I can add the floating action button. So I'm just going to quickly bring down the floating action button. So right here, you could see we have that floating action button. And right here, we're going to be having access to a, an action. So let's say I want, I want whenever we click on that floating icon button, I want this value to increase. And uh, you know that since it's a, a type, not necessarily a Boolean value, we have to return something like a null value. So we don't actually have something like a null here. I don't know whether this will work because I've not actually tried it out. But I think uh, this worked perfectly the last time I tried. So I'm just going to type define a void called, uh, let's say, increment counter, which is just a void function. And also here we have a type void of generate quotes. So I'm going to pass the increment counter here. So that solves it. And I, whenever we click on that, I want the store to dispatch an action. So we are going to be dispatching from the types. So we have types.increment. And remember that in our reducer here, we have a reducer that, ha that handles that type dot increment. So whenever we click on that, whenever the types dot increment is dispatched, what we do is to copy the previous value and then we update it using the copy width. So coming back to our main that, that file, save that and let's kind of refresh. I'm going to quickly click on this. So let's just click on this. That should definitely increase the values. So you could see once I'm clicking on this, you could see the numbers are increasing. And that's how we can actually update that value using our store dispatch. So the next thing we want to do is to add one more thing for the quotes. So for the click count, it's going to be a challenge. You're going to be the one that will do that. So here using the store connector again, I'm going to just quickly copy this. and paste it down. And uh, here we have to assess a type of string. And here I wanna assess a quote. And uh, let's say, uh, let's pass the quotes here, quote value here. And I'll put the command there and uh, save that. So make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. And I'm going to kind of uh, give this some couple of style. So we have a, it's kind of longer I use Flutter. So we have a, a text, a line of text align dot center. So this is test align dot center. And also we have a style. Let's just give this a text style of font size of 20.0. So let's just say 30.0 and let's save that. And I think we should get our default quotes. So right here, you could see our default quotes and I want to update that quotes, which is going to make me create one more store connector. So for this store connector here, we're going to be using a button. So I'm just going to quickly bring that down. So the only obsolete thing here is the depreciate member use. I'm using a flat button, which is the old way of doing that, but let's just leave it for the simplicity sake. And here I'm dispatching, but for now, I'm not gonna be dispatching a type. I'm gonna be dispatching an action. And I'm gonna call this a get random quotes. So we are gonna create that immediately. So we're going to create that inside our actions. So in our actions here, uh, let me just quickly check that out. I'm going to import, uh, quickly let me just grab this from here. 
when you pour the redox and I also have to uh, create a class called updates quotes action I think that's exactly what you're using here no we're using get random quotes so the update quote action is going to be used to update our quotes yes we need that then for this one we have the get random quotes uh, let's just let's say for example you want to be generating this quote from the internet or let's say a random quote i'm just going to give you a clue you can use a thunk action which is going to take which is going to uh, accept an app state in case we return any value on this function then we have get random quotes then here we have the store which is a, a, a an app state store a state I'm kind of making mistakes in pronunciation then we can pass the store and don't forget that each function is an assigned function so we don't have that uh, imported and I think we can just fix that yeah that solves it so this one we are gonna be uh, dispatching a, a, an action here so we are dispatching an action which is going to uh, dispatch an action to our reducer so we can use any action that we want to dispatch which is the new update code action so we can actually pass the value coming from our function here but since we are not passing any value here let me just specify let's say updated quotes and right here we are gonna have a string of quotes and in the constructor we can use the update code action let me kind of make this capital later because it looks more more better that way So we have these dots quotes. So hopefully uh, that should definitely solve that, but uh, can start with an underscore. Okay guys, sorry, I forgot that this is not necessary this way, yeah. So in case we want to be able to assess this code in our reducer and also update it, we can now create a getter using the quotes and which is going to be this dot underscore quotes. So getters are actually a way of updating that. And let's say we, we are to pass a value from our random we can just pass a value here but since we are not passing a value we can just go ahead and use an updated quote here so right now you could see we have the updated quote action or update quote action which is going to use a quote to actually update this quote and this quote is going to be uh, updating exactly this quote you see here so I'm going to come over to the reducer uh, right now let's just go ahead and uncomment this so we have the update quotes so it's kind of showing us uh, okay for the return we have to return the state as well so here we have the update quote action so you could see we have action.quotes so any value that we are updating is going to be assigned to this getter which is the quotes and we can be able to grab it from our action which is the update quotes and right here finally we can just go ahead and import that get random quotes and that should solve it so if we check back here and uh, let's kind of restart our application so we have the default quotes and I'm going to click on that. So I think uh, it's not yet done with starting. So we have that and also when I click on this, we should be able to change that quotes. Uh, change quotes. 
so here we have update codes and right here we have let me kind of uh, let's say new quotes to make sure that okay guys it should actually update even with that because uh, that will happen whenever we add the update code to our reducer. So let's just add it here and get rid of the unnecessary things and that should work. So this should be update code reducer. Let's just add that to make it look more like a reducer. And let's save that once more and uh, refresh our application. And I'm gonna click on this to make sure that the application has started. So we have one, two, three, and clicking on this, you could see we have the updated quotes and back here. So once we uh, kind of say updated a new quote, so this is still using the old one. So whenever we kind of fresh. And make sure that everything is working perfectly so my machine is kind of laggy and I, I can just click on this you could see we have updated new put so that's it for using flutter state management so if you enjoyed this tutorial please do make sure you hit that like button and also the subscribe button so that YouTube can show this video to a whole lot of people that are willing to learn flutter state management and I think I kind of broke it down and I'm gonna make a tutorial on this on my website. The link will be on the description. You can actually go there. You will see the whole source code there provided. And also I'm gonna make available the GitHub repository. So you can just click on the description and also click on the link. So once more again, please do make sure you hit that like button and also the subscribe button and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.